Well, good morning, uh, good afternoon, good evening, good middle of the night, wherever you are. It's Wendy again, and I'm back with some more pages for the journal. And today I'm going to be combine a cup, combining a few things. Watercolor, of course. So before I begin, please be sure to subscribe to my channel. This is a going to be a year-long project with different stuff going on all the time. It's not the only thing I'll be doing this year, but I think it's it's a really exciting one. It's an altered book, and because it's January, obviously I haven't got very far in it. But today I'm starting a new page, and I've taken a few pages out of here because I wanted to have the, this print on the back, and what was here before was pages like this, so I took those out. And now I'm going to start by decorating this page, and then I'm going to do some watercoloring on this page. So stay with me till the end because you can see how it all comes together. Uh, interesting thing about watercoloring on paper like this is it doesn't always act like watercolor paper. So we'll find out what happens. So to begin with, I've got some pieces of actually this newsprint that I used for a background or just a water soaker for um, my my ribbon project, which I did before Christmas when I tried um, watercoloring ribbons, which actually turned out surprisingly well. I'm just, I'm still kind of delighted with that, but you can see the colors, how they came together. And I even used some, some sparkly paint, which ended up on the paper underneath because everything soaked through. So I decided rather than toss this in the recycling, that I went, oh my goodness, this has beautiful patterns on it. So I'm going to use one of them for the inside page. So this, this piece will go as kind of the background on this page. And then I'm going to be adding some things to it. So I haven't ironed this one. Usually if something's been really wet like this and is really crumpled, I iron it because it makes it flatter, but this one isn't too bad. And I think it's because it's been, it, you know, since I used it in December, it's been in a in a pile of something and that has just flattened it out. So I'm just gonna use the glue stick. This one, it seems, is just about gone, so I'm gonna have to get another one out. And I wanted to leave this paper in the background so that I can actually just go off the edge and not worry about it. So I'm putting lots on here. I want it to stick down fairly tightly. Get those corners. And then I'll just bring my book over here. Come on, book. And put this down. And I want to make sure I get it pretty square on the page. that and then press it down hard. So one way to do that of course is to just close the book and press that down hard. So I'm going to remove this because I don't want glue in the back cover. There. This to go right into that fold and not fold back on me. Ooh, I love that. So there's another idea of how you can use watercolor. You just use it to, you know, soak up whatever, or just, you know, use it on newsprint. Paint however you like. Add some, I have some pearlescent color in here too. And then you can cut the pieces and use them for background. Oh, it seems I've got a little bit of lift right here, so I'll just put some of that in there. I might actually put a bit of tape along there just to make sure it stays down. But for now, it'll be fine. And I've, I found these, these little birds online, and they're so cute. Um, I love the background with the writing and the print and everything. And they were a set, I think it was Artie Mays I found them on. And I thought this would really look nice in this, in this outside corner where there's a little less paint. So 
so that's what I'm going to do. I uh, did get a new one out. I think I need to buy some of those big ones. for a better camera setup so hopefully I can have a little bit higher uh, viewpoint there's that and then here comes the train so we'll wait that out I bought these little lights on a wire recently and I just love them and they actually 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 produce lots of light so I thought it would like dress up my little tabletop here now I'm going to, I found this too online, which I love. It's a little bit fuzzy, but then old things often are. So I'm going to add that to the page and dress it up. Well, a lot of the joy of junk journaling or art journaling is just for the pleasure it gives you. It doesn't really have to have a, an end purpose. But when you're finished filling a book or, or a whole journal, you have something that you created and had the joy of creating it. So well, that's, that's all, all good things. All right, I'm gonna put that one right there. And now, because I love silver and sparkle, I am considering putting that in. I have this um, Sharpie. It's actually a paint pen, so I thought I would first make sure it works and then just put an edge around here, just a silver edge. It's not going to be too perfect, which is fine with me. I don't really aim for perfection in most things. I aim for it does it give me joy. end up like I wanted it to. It just kind of dresses it up a little bit and if you're like me you like dressing up now I have this it says if you listen carefully the silence is beautiful and I, I used um, I used this distress oxide ink and a little brush and put a little bit of, of make it look vintage around it and I think I might put it right here I don't want to cover up too much of this background because I think it's really gorgeous so let's just do that I'll put it a little closer to this bird and I also have this pretty tape my daughter gave me a whole bunch of washi tapes and they're so nice and so fun. I don't, don't want that little tiny bit at the end there. So I'll get rid of that. Got a couple of designs here. Just going to put it along the top here. actually cut it. There, 
that's really pretty. I like that. A lot of what I do here with watercolor and with journaling and with paper is just to make something pretty because I think there's a lot of ugly in the world and if you listen to the news at all which I avoid a lot I avoid that a lot um, you'll come away thinking that the whole world is horrible and mean and nasty and ugly but really all over the world is beauty. Now, I have a little problem here, so I need to fix it. For some reason, I got a little blob of glue on the front here. It must have been left over from that last one. So, there's that done. And I think I'm going to add this just in here. Savon au jasmin. A little French soap label. I wish it was a little clearer, but it is what it is. And now, I think that's almost done, except that I'm going to do a little drawing. This will tie in with the painting that's going on this page. So, I'm just going to make a little, a little flower here, and you can follow along. That's the center. Make a uniform daisy shape. I usually do this because otherwise I end up with it not matching or all over the place. And then fill in. So we'll just do a nice little daisy here. And I don't think I'm going to paint it because the background is already painted. I'll just leave it like that. And daisies have kind of spiky leaves, but I think I'm just going to make it a little bit different. by the way, would be really fun. And I might do that one of these days, just do the whole page in drawings like that and then start filling them in. And I have seen other artists work that they do that and it, it's gorgeous, I love it. So I think it needs one more thing here, just to, just to kind of camouflage that. And I've got this, this gold tape, which you might say, yeah, but you got silver at the top, at which point I say, um, so. Doing crafts like this, or art journals like this, is, um, if I can remind you, for your own pleasure. There's no grading system, there's no marking. There, I really like that. Now, that page is finished. I'm going to cover it up because I'm going to start using water over here. So, um, let me see. I have this old piece of tissue paper. It should do nicely. I'll just maybe fold it in. So it kind of stays there. For this page, I'm using the same pen, this uh, Pigma Micron 05, as I used here, because this is pretty busy and it, it needs to stand out. So I'm going to use the same kind of flower idea. Just really simple sort of daisy affairs this time what I will be painting them So 
So you can see how simple this is. Sometimes um, I think when you're trying to do art you, you get too kind of clogged up in in making it perfect or in comparing yourself, your, what, what you see yourself doing to somebody else's. Instead of comparing it against yourself or um, just comparing to what it could be or basically leaving, keep working on it till you're done because so often in the middle or even in the beginning like this you think, oh, this is going to be horrible. In fact, I think that painting or creating a piece of art is a lot like writing. They're all kind of ugly in the middle, but you should never stop there because of that. Now there's my drawing and because my theme in this whole project, well not the whole project but for the first few pages anyway, is kind of blue, I'm going to paint my flowers blue. So I'm starting out with a size 12 brush which is a, a red sable one, getting lots, of, getting the air out of it. And I'm going to be using a kind of a mix of cerulean blue and Prussian blue and maybe a bit of turquoise just so the colors tie in. So let's see what happens. I have this puddle left over from the other day which never waste paint if you don't have to. Well you can if you want to, it's not that big a deal but I want to try this and see if it's what I want. Um, something a little bit, maybe a little bit lighter. I know there's no such thing as a really blue, blue daisy, but this is make-believe anyway. Well, it's design is what it is. I like that a little bit better. And I am going to add a bit of turquoise to this mix. I like that one, but it's a little bit too strong, I think. So I'll mix that up really well. Throw a little bit more turquoise in there just so it takes that turquoise color. Then add a bunch of water. So here's what I do. I've got my puddle and I just pick up water with my brush and dump it in there so that the mixture is thinner. And then what I want to do is towards the center of the flower so when you pick up your brush it leaves the darkest spot there and that's what we want I'm also not doing this I'm doing the ones next to right now because I don't want them all to run together I, I, you can. I mean, there's no big deal. It's no, there's no harm in it. It's just that I'll show you what happens. Yeah, I guess that's okay. They're kind of all the same color anyway. So what I want is a little variation in depth. So I'm going to add a little bit of cerulean blue and yeah, we'll see, let me see. See that gives it a slightly different tone.
Now what's happening here is the paper is buckling. So then it, because there's some, so much moisture on it, it's actually pouring towards the lowest part. But there's an easy fix for that, which is, just lift up the page. Now, yeah, see it, it runs into where it's lowest. So what I'm going to do then is take the water out of my brush. You can just pick it up. So if you take your water, the water out of your brush, it's like a, it's like a damp sponge. It'll just suck it up into the brush. So if I don't want that out at the ends of the petals, I can just pick it up. And then I can go in afterwards and darken it in the middle once it's a little drier. But as it is right now, this is what we got. But this one, I'll put just a bit more turquoise in it, make it a little bit more vibrant. Because why not? And the, the ink actually will help define the petals anyway. So even though the print shows through, you can still see the ink. This is Prussian blue. I'm just going to dab it in here around the, the centers of the flowers. I hope it doesn't run off in all directions. So one thing you can do when your paint is wet and you want to hurry it up, or if you want to direct the paint, is use your hairdryer, which is what I'm going to do here. Now the, the flowers are just about dry and I've got a couple of other things I want to do. The leaves are dry as well, and I want to cover up the words along the top there. So it says forward and page 11. And I'm going to just just put a piece like that in there. And tear it. My daughter gave me a whole bunch of washi tapes, and they're so much. They're so much fun. I mean. Anything artistic is just so much fun. I didn't even put that on very straight, did I? It's so hard to see sometimes because the colors are almost the same. But we can do it again. That's the great thing about washi tape. This time I'll line it up with the words a little bit better. And I love these little flowers. They're super cute. And I also want to add something down in here. So I've got this blue tissue paper, which I guess would tear this way. I'm going to tear a piece and glue it in here. Let me see. Let me go. Let's do this side first. I've torn that with the grain of the paper. And of course, the grain goes this way. You can see it. And most things do have a green, including skin and leather. And so, of course, this this side is I'm tearing against the green, and it doesn't really want to cooperate very well. But that's okay because it gives me this nice ragged edge. And I'm going to take it, I think, just about down to the bottom. I'm going to tear it just a little bit more off here. want to cover up too much of that leaf. So let me tear this off like this. Now I'm finished with watercolor for the moment so I'm going to move my palette here. And <clears throat> with this one I am going to use glue to kind of measure this. Actually, I think I want it a little bit shorter. So I'm not going to try and put glue on the tissue paper because it will probably just tear. But what I am doing is measuring it here, what I need it for. So I 
fortunately there's something to measure by, so I'm using leghorn and streams as the edges. And then we'll just pop this on top of the glue. This rubber stamp in my things and um, you might wonder why I keep finding things in my things because I have a lot of craft supplies. I was into scrapbooking for a while and then life happened and um, I had to put it all away so it's been in cupboards and closets for some time and now I can get it out again because things have calmed, about, calmed down Actually, in the last eight years, both of my parents passed away. And there was a lot to deal with, which I'm sure you can understand. So I'm going to just put this stamp in black right on top of this and hope it, hope it turns out. Ah, it's perfect. Here's another sheet of embellishments that I found online and I'm going to use one of these ones with the butterflies so I'm just going to cut them out and then we'll see which one works. Alright, this is what I've got. I've got a bigger one, a smaller one and a ticket. So let's just see which one is the best. I'm thinking just to put it here. Oops, there's a little bit of a raggy bit there from this. Just here, either lining up with the edge or over a bit or in a bit. I think I like in a bit. There's the ticket. I like that. And there's the large one. I think that one's too big. And it could go this way. Nope. It has to go this way. So should I put it like that? Or in a bit? I think it works just lining straight up. All right, that's what's going to happen here. So we'll get out the glue and sticky this up. Don't stick on my hand, that's not how it works. And just place that right there. Now, I am wondering about a little piece of washi along here, so let's see. I found this tiny strip with um, little flying birds on it, which is nice. Kind of goes with the, uh, the bird theme over here. So I think I'm going to, what, I think I'll just put it like that. Now, here's our finished pages, except should I paint this? I'm thinking yes, um, just a little bit, just lightly. So I've got to move some things here and I'll be back in a second. Okay, I've picked up just um, some phthalo green, which can you see that? Yes, right in here. I mixed it with some of this Prussian blue and just kept it quite quite watery. That's a little too, I want it just really barely there. Now I'm painting on different paper here because this is the newsprint. So I don't know if you can tell but the newsprint is just sucking it up like a vacuum. It's acting so different from this one. darker in, in here.
and then some green on the leaves. And I think I'll use um, just the, the yellow green. Yeah, just a little bit of the yellow green. I'm not trying to paint inside the leaves at all. I'm keeping it really, really loose. And then a tiny bit of yellow for the center. Which of course will also suck up right away. There! I guess I should say that it will absorb. But the paper does kind of go... <laughs> so here's our, our layout for today. Um, you'll notice this has made the paper curl a little bit. But once it's in the book and the book is closed, it'll flatten out again. See, there's it's already done that. So how pretty is that? And it's so easy to do. Basically, you know, you need pens, you need some paint. This, like I said before, is just newsprint that was there to absorb the paint from another project, but you can easily just get newsprint and just throw paint on it, like splash it on, brush it on, however you like. And then the daisies are so simple to draw. In fact, you can go back in afterwards with another pen and just add add a little bit more detail if you want to. I think this probably could use a little bit more detail. Don't have to. I think they look fine as they are. But how fun is it to have the painting over top of the print? It's just, I mean, it's just such a such a fun art journal project. So I hope you give it a try. Um, please subscribe to my channel because I've got lots more stuff coming up and there's lots of things in my store too. It's growing every week and with things that you can just download and a lot of them are free. So get on the mailing list over there and you I think you'll find it worth it. That's it for today and I'll see you next time.